Hello, and welcome back to episode five of Lowering the Barrier. I'm Alex. And I'm Maddie. And we are the hosts of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's been a minute since we have recorded a podcast because we were on vacation. And so we recorded episodes three and four before we left. And we took a two week, basically two week hiatus. Right. So we were kind of in this routine. And I feel like I was starting to get the intro down. Yeah. And I feel like I'm kind of not nailing the intro right now. I think this is really solid. Okay. Well, this is episode five. Yeah. I actually don't have a title for this one yet. Yeah. Our working title is I how to it. maintain weight and fitness on vacation. I don't like that. Which <laughs> it's a little wordy. It's it's vacation based. Yeah. This episode. Yeah. But I'm hoping, well, not hoping, but yeah, I mean, I guess I'm hoping that by the time the user, the listener has clicked on the episode, it's a more engaging title than how to maintain weight slash fitness on vacation. Yeah, because we don't really, we're not really specifically talking about maintaining no. weight. Nope. Well, that's a part of it. Yeah, it's a part of it. Yeah. But it's not the it's not entirety. Like, no. So yeah. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us once again for Lowering the Barrier. We just got back from vacation. So we went to the Grand Cayman. Yeah, the beautiful. The Grand Cayman. I, I, I don't know if it's a Grand Cayman, the Grand Cayman, the Grand Cayman Islands. I don't I don't think it's the Grand Cayman. Okay, well, it is the United States, you know? So I'm just saying it is, you know what I mean? I don't know, know I mean? because when you fill out a form yeah. and they ask what your country is, you, you definitely just, don't put you the <laughs> You no just one's, put United States yeah, of America, this isn't, USA. This isn't a the Ohio State University yeah. sort of situation. <laughs> and that's a hot topic for our people in the Midwest. Um, Ohio State versus the Ohio State. All right. Anyway, do you want to talk about vacation at all before we get into it? Yeah, might as well. Sure. What was, let's give me a highlight. What was your favorite part of vacation? I have the, mine. The clearly. stingray. Yes. Yeah. Same. That was yeah. incredible. Yeah. So in Grand Cayman, we went on this boat tour thing. <laughs> where these two guys take us out into maybe two miles off the coast, mile, two miles off the coast. And there's this sandbar. And in that sandbar, there are, it's waist deep water. So you can just <laughs> walk around and there are like a hundred stingrays. Yeah. And they're friendly and they're just kind of swimming around you. And these, the tour guides really encourage you to hold them and, and kiss them and they jump on your back a little bit. Like the tour guide kind of helps with that. The stingrays, the, not the, the tour guides. The tour guides do not, <laughs> at least an hour tour, did not hop on our back. The stingrays yeah. do. Anyway, it was just such a cool experience to, I don't know, hang out with the animal, hang out. I don't know, just like experience the animals in mm -hmm. their environment. And we went to, and I'm going to, I'm going to double back to the stingray thing in a minute. But we went to a conservation type thing for turtles and we did get to swim with turtles as well. But the water was so murky that it was kind of gross. We were snorkeling in it and it was, it was honestly, it was pretty disgusting. Um, and it was cool because, you know, swimming with turtles, like that sounds amazing, but mm -hmm. think about the murkiest. I mean, there's, just, I'm gonna, it's going explicit guys. I'm going to say the S word. So earmuffs to kids. If you got them in the room, there's just a lot of shit in the water. Yeah. I mean, Okay. In its defense, we could still see the turtles. It's not like you couldn't see oh, in front it's of you. Not like, like pond right. muck. You know, but, we're just we're really amping up how murky it, it was, but it, it was a little icky. It was gross. Yeah. I was excited to get out and take a shower. I was I'm excited not, to I'm not shower usually like after that. <laughs> I'm not usually that, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of I don't really mind muck that yeah. much. But the turtles were cute though. Turtles were very cute. But then I also felt bad that they're they're trapped, you know? Mm -hmm. And especially when we walked in and they're all climbing all over each other. Anyway, back to the stingray thing. That was amazing. You know, <laughs> everybody always makes the comments about Steve Irwin. Um and the tour guides immediately they were like, you're gonna ask or at least you're thinking about it because everybody asks. And so they basically said Steve Irwin was not trained with that specific, I don't know, type of stingray. It was a different breed of stingray. I don't know if you heard any of this. Yeah, vaguely. Not enough that I could and then he say like, anything about it, though. He got barbed specifically mm -hmm. in the heart and then yeah. pulled it out. And I don't know, I guess, I mean, I don't know much about knife wounds, but the little bit I do know is that you're probably not supposed to take them out, probably. even if it's kind of scary. <laughs> I don't know. I hope I never have to deal with that. 
Anyway, Grand Cayman was a phenomenal vacation. We had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Very relaxing. Very relaxing. Yeah. Lots of beach time. Yeah. If you're looking for a beach vacation, that would be a place that I'd be checking out. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Really beautiful island and very safe. Everybody kept saying how safe it was. And I yeah. always felt very safe. Even yeah. when we walked on the side of the road when it was dark, mm -hmm. I still felt very safe there. Yeah. Anything you're looking forward to this week? Start the podcast off with some good vibes. You know, it's crazy. I feel like I don't have any plans this week. No, that's nice. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Yeah. I don't think there's anything it's good or how, bad happening. It's weird how after vacation, we went on vacation to slow down. But then <laughs> when you get back from vacation, you almost need a slow down week to like, yes. you know, get back into it. Yeah. I feel like it's just going to be work this yeah. week, which yeah. is fine. You know, one thing, I don't know if we have it or if we're talking about it. I'm going to write this down really quick. What to do when you get back from vacation. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. One thing I'm looking forward to is the Lions. We are recording yeah. this on Sunday, about two hours before the Lions game. And we're in Michigan, if <laughs> listeners don't know. And this is a big deal. Lions could potentially be going to the Super Bowl. They haven't won a playoff game in 30 years. I was say ever, maybe? No, it's like 30 years before oh, text messaging. Oh, like was, 32 years or something, I something think like is that. the number. And so we won a playoff game. You know, mm -hmm. And now if we win this one today, we're going to the Super Bowl, which is yeah. just, you know, got to get to the 49ers. So that's a tough test. But people who are listening to this, they already know the answer. Yeah. Wow. The suspense. <laughs> All right. So today we are going to be talking about, it's broken up into six segments. Segment one is going to be pre-trip planning. Segment two is staying active on vacation. Segment three, nutritional strategies. Segment four, balancing enjoyment and goals. Segment five, some additional tips, especially for people who get constipated on vacation. And then segment six is how to get back into your routine post-vacation. So basically our goal here is I personally get a lot of questions about how do you maintain your fitness or nutrition or your weight, et cetera, et cetera, when you're on vacation. And I do want to just make the overarching comment of don't worry about it. Yeah. You go on vacation how many times per year does the average person go on vacation? For sure. One to two times per year. So if you gain, let's say you're doing it for a week, you're talking about two weeks out of 52 weeks if you're vacationing twice. Right. Dude, that's not going to make that much of a difference. Right. Yeah. I think that's actually, it's technically our last point on here, but I think it's a great starting point of, there are really three options when you're looking at getting ready for a, a vacation or there might be more, but these are three big ones. And it's, you know, are you going to stick to your calorie deficit if you're currently in a deficit? Are you going to commit to sticking to that while you're on vacation? Are you okay using this as a maintenance break while you're on vacation? Or are you kind of just going to indulge freely? You're just going to go nuts. Right. Yeah. And you know, each of those is valid. You get to pick and decide, but all of those have some things to kind of consider before you take off, you know, if you, there's no right or wrong, but you kind of have to be mentally prepared for what's going to happen when you get back home. Yep. Yeah. And you should be almost preparing, trying to make that decision before you even leave. Definitely. Because before vacation, because if you are, no, I, I'm 135 pounds today and I want to be 134 pounds by the time I come <laughs> back, dude, that might be, that might be tough. Yeah. And we'll talk about scale fluctuations, but let's say you want to lose body fat on vacation, that's going to take a lot of planning because you are now <laughs> moving out of your typical environment. Anyway, let's just get into it, huh? So yeah. our first part is segment one is pre-trip planning. So whether you are, it doesn't really matter if you are planning to try to lose weight or maintain weight, or if you just really don't care, it's still probably a good idea to have some kind of an idea of what you're going to do in terms of fitness and nutrition. So for fitness, are you the type of person that enjoys working out? If you are, like I am, I lifted on a seven day vacation. I think I lifted four times. I know at least three. At least three, because mm -hmm. I recorded three of them, but I think four actually. Yeah. Yeah, because I did that one with you that was pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I lifted four times on a seven day vacation and I wouldn't do that. I'd sound like I would recommend that. It's just because I enjoy it. I like having an arm pump, mm -hmm. you know? Although I didn't do it in the morning, I would say when I go to the beach, but we didn't yeah. actually do it in the morning. And we also, you know, we also kind of planned our vacation to make it 
available. Yeah. You know, we had a gym very close by that we were able to utilize. Yeah, 30 and, second walk. And that makes, you know, going to the gym a couple more times a lot more feasible than if you're 20, 30 minutes away from the right. gym. Yeah. Most hotels and, you know, I think one of the things that I always personally check into is what is the, what does the gym look like? And we <laughs> didn't do it here because I was so excited to go to, uh, like a, I'm going to say a public gym, but just <laughs> a, a gym that anybody could go to rather than an on, on site gym. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that gym that we were looking at, how much was it? It's like, it like a, 170. Something crazy. Yeah, it was like 170 or something like that. Maybe it was more. I, I don't think know. it was 175 for oh, the week. That sounds familiar. What yeah, 175 for a week pass. And we inquired about that on day three. And so I was like, ah, I might go two or three times. And then yeah. I wanted her to go too. So it was like 350. And it's just like 150 bucks to go to a gym a few times. Ugh. It did look like a nice gym, but yeah. So one of the things that you could do is always, you know, check into what your gym is looking like mm -hmm. and then make a plan. Most hotel gyms, most condo gyms, wherever you're staying, they're going to have probably dumb, but almost guaranteed dumbbells, likely a treadmill, which I'm not as concerned about personally, because mm -hmm. I'll just get my steps in walking around on vacation. But then they might also have a cable machine. And our place didn't this time. It was interesting. They had a squat rack, a deadlift platform, barbells, right. usually... Very atypical Very for, atypical. you know, a hotel stay or condo stay. Usually it's gym. dumbbell. Oh, a Smith machine as well. Mm -hmm. Usually it's dumbbells and cables and you can do everything you need with yeah. dumbbells and cables. I mean, dumbbells, you got split squats, you got lunges, you got squats, you got deadlifts. I mean, you could do any pressing or pulling variations, curls, extensions. I mean, you got everything. I could list out all the exercises you could do, but then with cables, I mean, you know, I like, and I feel like a lot of listeners should know by now that I prefer cables for my arm stuff. If you didn't know that, well, now, you know, I like, because it's an arcing motion, you are not so worried about, if you're curious, just look up moment arms, I guess, physics moment arms, and that should do a pretty good explanation. It'd be very hard for me to display that over this yeah. Audio medium, you know? Okay. And then nutrition planning ahead for us probably looks, you know, I would say it probably looks a little bit different, but not necessarily. So I have severe food allergies. Mm -hmm. And so we always try to stay in a place that has a kitchen. That's a must do for us. Right. But, you know, hanging around with more, well, really just like my sister and her husband, and then hearing about some people on social media who have kids they care very much about having a kitchen because then they can do breakfast and sometimes even lunch <laughs> in the place. And then I didn't even think about it with kids. Oh yeah. That makes a whole yeah. lot of sense. Even outside of, you know, family dynamics and that just the convenience of being able to eat. And yeah. also you're just going to save money, yeah. you know, it'll, you'll save quite a bit of money. Yeah. 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 All right. So one of the questions that we got in preparation for this podcast was how do you prepare for maintaining your fitness routine while away? And <sighs> You know, if you have the equipment that fits into whatever fitness routine you're doing as is, great. But more than likely, it's going to change up a little bit. So first off, you're not going to lose any muscle after one week of not exercising. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. But, you know, if you do want to work out, just do stuff you enjoy. Just like <laughs> if you have priority muscles, maybe it's your glutes, maybe it's your arms, maybe it's just like we're exercise those muscle groups that you enjoy. If you go into the gym and you just do two sets of curls and two sets of tricep extensions, that's a whole lot better than nothing. And again, <laughs> don't feel like you have to do something, but that would be a way to kind of, kind of, I don't know, mean, maintain that routine, also scratch that itch, but without, without it being kind of a slog of a workout. Right. You got nothing to add there. Okay. <laughs> so I was going to, I was going to add something that's more nutrition focused. Sure, go for it. So, you know, maintaining your fitness routine, that's one thing, but when it comes to like maintaining your nutrition routine as well, or staying on track, if you are currently in a deficit or, you know, working towards a nutrition goal, I think that vacation could be a really great time to kind of try out, you know, like, am I capable of, or have I learned the skills and adapted the habits that allow me to not track every single meal that I eat. And now obviously that totally depends on where you're at within 
your fitness and nutrition journey. You know, if you're really new to tracking calories, this might not be the time <laughs> to give that a whirl. But if you're someone who says like, I've already committed to cutting out alcohol or I've already committed to, you know, making breakfast and lunch at my condo or hotel, this could be a great time to see like, have I learned those sort of habits to yeah, making high satiety foods, yeah, you know, dominating your diet with lean protein, fruits, veggies, mm -hmm. how to build a plate, you know, things like that. And then when you go to the grocery store, I mean, that might even be a good idea is kind of have some idea of your, what meals you're going to eat. You know, when we go to the grocery store, we kind of freestyle it. At least we did when we were down there, mm -hmm. we freestyled it, but it was like, we started making a list on our phone as we were walking around. Like, what are we going to eat? Okay, nachos. All right, maybe a few things for breakfast. So we got like pancakes. We had like a few lunch options, a few dinner options, a few breakfast options. And it doesn't have to be super difficult. You just have to like, you know, think about what meals you're going to eat. And then what is, you know, what, what kind of groceries are going to satisfy those meals? Yeah, it goes a long way. Having just like some kind of semblance of a plan. It doesn't have to be perfect. But if you mm -hmm. can kind of pick off something, that, that'll help. Another thing to touch on, you know, before you head off on your trip, really consider, and I know we touched on this a bit, but like, dude, you're not going to lose a pound or two pounds. It's just not likely that you're going to lose weight on vacation. So like, don't set yourself up with that false expectation. Right. At best. I mean, it's not like, like, could you? Absolutely you could. But like, let's say your husband or your wife or your friend or your kids or whatever they are, not your kids, but maybe they're big drinkers. That's why I said not kids. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're, maybe they're big drinkers and like, you're just going to have some, I don't know, margaritas by the beach. Like do your thing, dude. It's fine. It's not going to be that big of a deal. Now, alcohol is very calorie dense mm -hmm. and it usually leads to eating quite a bit more. You know, so maybe one glass of water for every alcoholic beverage that'll really help out. And just from a perspective of not dealing with as bad of a hangover and trying to get ahead on hydration, that it, that's probably a good idea too. Yeah. I also think vacation is not the time you want to be beating yourself up because you, oh, I didn't make it to the gym four times this week or, yeah. oh, I ate a little bit more than I planned on it at dinner. You know, it's, it's vacation. You should enjoy yourself, which I think kind of goes back to that whole, like you can kind of use this as a time to maintain and just kind of like take the reins off a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Pump the brakes a bit. Mm -hmm. Now, when you come back from vacation, this is something you're going to need to mentally and emotionally prepare for. You might see a high number on the scale. And if you tuned into our fat loss episode, mm -hmm. you need to know that it is just a scale fluctuation. You know, you might be up three, four. I had a client who was up nine, 10, 11 pounds after she went on three vacations when we were working together and she'd be up in weight so high. She ended up telling me that she would get really constipated on vacation. And mm -hmm. by day five of vacation, it was so painful that it was anyway. So we actually ended up figuring that out and we will have tips later on in this episode in section or in segment five, but yeah, just be prepared for, you know, maybe don't even step on the scale. The next morning you get back. Yeah. Maybe give it a day or two. <laughs> maybe give it a day or two. If you're somebody who gets emotional from mm -hmm. scale, you know, numbers, I, I, I don't love the idea of, because, you know, then you're almost like giving more power to the scale by staying away from mm -hmm. it. So I, I don't necessarily love that. But if you know that, Hey, no, I'm somebody who emotionally reacts a strong emotional reaction to a higher number than I expect, then just don't do it. And if you're not, you know, more power to you. All good. But that weight will come down. It's a mixture of water weight and stomach content and extra glycogen. And maybe you just haven't taken a shit in a while. You know, that's, that's when we leave our house, that's often the, you know, we get out of our routine and mm -hmm. bathroom habits can drastically change. And it's, it's important to remember that gaining a pound of body fat, you know, the often quoted number is one pound of body fat is approximately 3,500 calories. So you'd have to eat like hypothetically, you'd have to eat 3,500 calories above maintenance. Let's say you maintain at 2,000 calories, which is a pretty standard number. I'm not going to say like that's the, the number, number right. for everybody. Like I maintain at 3,000, you maintain it, I don't know, maybe like 21, 2,200. Yeah. Some people, if they are not, if they're pretty sedentary, they might maintain it 17, 1,800 calories. Mm -hmm. But let's just use 2,000 as a placeholder number. You'd have to eat 5,500 calories Mm -hmm. to gain one pound of body fat. And that's not even telling the full story. Now, obviously, if you did this over seven days, being in a 500 calorie surplus per day, sure, 
that's very reasonable. Yeah, on va- on vacation that could happen. Yeah. Uh, even not on vacation that, sure. could happen. that could happen. Sure. But the thing to remember here is you're probably going to be walking a lot more on vacation, mm-hmm. so your energy needs are going to go up. And if you did eat, like let's say you did eat like 500 calories more per day, you're moving more. Okay, that's going to take a big chunk of it. There's also the thermic effect of food, which so it just takes so much more. There was this overfeeding study that I didn't pull for this episode, but they overfed people. I don't even, I don't want to mess up the numbers, but basically the study was they overfed people a ridiculous amount of calories. And they were kind of seeing like, you know, how much does do, do people's energy expenditure metabolism, like adapt to that Mm -hmm. shockingly high to, in order to actually gain body fat is a shockingly high number. So it's not necessarily exactly 3,500 calories, but that's not a bad number just to like kind of give you a frame of reference that if you're up five, 10 pounds when you get <laughs> on vacation, it is almost certainly not a hundred percent body fat. Right. One week of not being super dialed in is not going to derail you. Yes, absolutely. I do also want to add in here, you know, we're kind of talking about, you know, vacation and saying like, feel free to kind of use this however you want. I do want to add in, if you're someone who vacations really often, if you are, you know, going on five, six, seven trips a year, it's like becomes months out of the year that you are on vacation. You know, every vacation might not be able to be a free for all or, you know, you might have to kind of dial in some of those vacations if, you know, you do have you know, a, a fitness and nutrition goal or a weight loss goal, yeah, or it, it's just going to really slow your progress. Right. And if, it's just like, if you're yo-yoing every, every five, six weeks, you're going on vacation, you know, okay, you spend four five, six weeks in a deficit and then you go on vacation. It's free for all you go nuts. And then you come back, you're like, dang, got to get back on the grind. I guess <laughs> it's like, that's not, that's not a great way to live. Maybe find a little more balance, but you know, who's to say? Yeah. Who's to say? Maybe they love that lifestyle. For sure. Yeah. Who knows? All right. Depending on where you stay, you are going to, when you're making like the pre-vacation plan, you're really think about where you're staying. Are you staying in a condo? Are you staying at some place with a kitchen? What kind of things do you have? Do you have a mini fridge? Can you ask for a mini fridge? Do you have a microwave? Can you ask for a microwave? Most hotels often will literally just put a mini fridge or a microwave in your hotel room if you ask. I've personally never done that. But I've heard that a lot. I don't know if we've ever stayed at a hotel that didn't already have one yeah, in the rooms. Right. I don't, I don't know if we have either. But yeah, you know, think about like, okay, well, how many meals are we going to eat out? How many meals are we going to eat in? Just kind of having a rough idea of that can really yeah. go a long way. Yeah. Different vacations are, are going to kind of set you up for very different yeah. capabilities. You know, if you were on a very remote wilderness retreat, you might have a harder time committing to a grocery trip and committing to going to, you know, the gym. But if you're at an all-inclusive resort that has a gym right on site and, you know, that sort of situation, you know, it might be a little bit easier. Yeah. Segment two, staying active on vacation. So let's talk about this from both a general active standpoint, like, you know, just getting more steps in, maybe walk a little bit more. If you're somebody who wears a fitness tracker, like a, like a wristwatch, like an Apple watch, a Fitbit, something like that might be a kind of cool thing. You don't have to do this, but it might be a cool thing to see. Like, are my steps way higher? Like, do I walk 6,000 at home, but now on vacation, I'm at 10, 12,000, maybe make a, make a note on how you feel you know, with those extra steps, but that's pretty standard, especially on European vacations. People mm-hmm. say they walk a ton. Personally, we walk everywhere Yeah, when we are on yeah. vacation. We try to either have like, we'll rent bikes or yeah. we'll just commit to walking everywhere. Yeah. We don't really rent cars on vacation. It's rare. We'd have to be forced to do that. Like it'd have to be a yeah. place where it's- We'd have to have plans that were like 30 plus minutes away yeah. by car. Like consistently though, because yeah. we would just Uber. Yeah. And then for workouts, you know, just, I'm going to say, just do what you can. We already touched on that. So I don't (laughs) feel like we need to cover that too much here. Is there anything else you want to add on this segment? This one's really short. Yeah, this one's really short. You know, we talked about doing an upcoming podcast on like your minimum, uh, the minimum amount you can do to kind of maintain and grow muscle. And I think this kind of plays a part there is like maybe just consider doing like dropping your sets Uh, and just doing do one set per exercise if you did that you did that two or three times but just be sure 
if you are reducing your volume, your set volume, just go hard. Um, Make sure the sets are very difficult. You could do something called Mayo reps, where basically you take a set to failure, wait five to 10 seconds, do it again to failure, wait five to 10 seconds, do it and do it again. I did that for, I did Smith machine hack squats, which are quad dominant. I basically put my feet a little bit in front of the bar and then was able to get full knee flexion. So my hamstrings were touching my calves at the bottom and I did bottom half rep partials based on like the literature on lengthened, lengthened muscle training that it's better for hypertrophy. So I did bottom half rep, Smith machine hack squats, myo reps. So I say, I mean, it was mouthful, but also one of the most painful quad sets I've ever done. I literally did one set of that and my quads were torched for days. It was brutal. So yeah, just try that on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but other, you know, kind of fun ways to stay active on vacation. If you're like us and you live in the North and snorkel. You- well, I was just going to say swimming, you know, yeah. we don't, we don't really get to swim yeah. most I of the year love being in the ocean. Me too. Yeah. yeah. So that's a, that's a great we one to stay active for a first time. And that was really fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, we way, went twice. Well, yeah, we went twice. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. That was way more fun than I anticipated. Snorkeling's yeah. a good time. Yeah. Other ways that, I don't know, people could stay active on vacation, you know, hiking. Mm-hmm. It's weird that we don't hike. Like, I feel like hiking we, is something we would love to we do. We love hiking. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. Especially, I mean, we go to Denver you know fairly often. You know what's dumb of me <laughs> is I always thought, like when I was growing up and up to an age that I actually don't want to publicly admit, I thought hiking was mountain climbing. I would get, them, <laughs> no, I'd get them confused. <laughs> and everyone's talking about how they're hiking. And I'm like, what? I thought everybody had this climbing equipment. It's not just like put some shoes on and go walk. Yeah. It's, no, it's I- hiking. I did think for a very long time, also embarrassingly old, not that it was mountain climbing, <laughs> but that it was like really intense. Like I it, it had was to more be intense. That it, it had to be super intense. intense. Not that like, hiking can't be like intense. Like you have a camel back on. Like yes. it's like this really intense endeavor. And then it turns out hiking is just a scenic route. Yeah. Of yeah. walking. And there's like I, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to downplay. De- sure, downplay sure. the intensity and like the physical demands that it'll take because maybe there's a high incline, maybe there are some yes. slick segments. And there's definitely much harder trails than sure. others, but I really but, thought that everything was hard. <laughs> but yeah, I I I was definitely overplaying the intensity of hiking. I thought this was a thing, you know, yeah. almost borderline that you'd have to get like trip advisor, you know, to a tour guide. Yes. Like a tour guide yeah. to like help you through like whitewater rafting. I thought yeah. whitewater rafting and hiking were basically on the same playing field. So it's like, everybody's just hiking. That's so yeah, funny. Crazy. Anyway, segment three, nutritional strategies. So what are some of the things that we do when we are on vacation? Uh, you know, obviously the grocery trip, the grocery trip is a big one. Yeah. We really think ahead of like, are we even going to go out to eat? You know, yeah. we go on a lot of vacations where we don't go to a restaurant at all. And again, that's because of my food allergies. For sure. If we didn't, if I didn't have food allergies, we would go out a lot. Yeah. Like a lot more. We would still eat at home. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, I'm not pretty sure I'm positive. Right. But, but when we do decide to go to a restaurant, you know, we peruse the menu well in advance, Yeah. not from a like super intense, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to eat? Like, what, like, how am I going to fit this into my calories? But just, you know, what are my options? What is my dinner going to kind of look like? So I can kind of plan again, this isn't, do I need to have a super heavy breakfast or, you know, you know, so that's one thing. A big thing I think even outside of meals is just snacks, you know, keeping some fruit, vegetables, Mm. like really easy things that you can bring around with you. So if you, if you're hungry, it doesn't have to be like a 500 calorie bowl of Cheetos or something. Yeah. And even, even if you decide like, oh, we're going to go down to the beach, let's bring a snack with us. That way we don't have to like run to the nearest, I don't know, fast food place or not that you can't do that. Speaking of which, and this is a side tangent, but so weird. Grand Cayman doesn't have McDonald's. It has McDonald's. Yeah. And there was, was, did we read like some kind of legal thing was going on there? I have no idea. But you type in Grand Cayman fast food and McDonald's pops up. And it's this local place. Anyways, that just really threw me for a loop. I almost (laughs) want to get some, I want to, I kind of want to get some backstory on that, but I don't think we have time for it on today's episode. Okay. What other healthy food choices? So we always try to do a high protein breakfast. That's something that I think that's probably just a 
a good yeah. tip for general life is to have a high protein breakfast when we are sleeping. So our, our body's all we do, always doing like one of two things. It is either in a state of muscle protein synthesis or muscle protein breakdown. Okay. It's more complicated than that. It's not like it's either like on or off. It's doing one or the other. Both of those things are constantly happening. And the sum of that is called your muscle protein turnover. So if your rate of muscle protein breakdown is higher than your rate of muscle protein synthesis, then you have a net negative muscle protein balance. The reason that I'm talking about this is when we are sleeping, we are going through an extended state of muscle protein breakdown being a little bit higher. So we can start the anabolic process of muscle protein synthesis by having some protein early in the morning. I think this is, this is actually a hot take for me. I think that is something that is not talked about enough. So for so long, science has looked at, like research has looked at muscle protein synthesis. And I think it, it isn't, muscle protein breakdown isn't talked about enough in ways of, we always talk about how to amplify muscle protein synthesis, but we don't mm -hmm. talk about ways to, we would never want to completely get rid of muscle protein breakdown because we, that is an important, it's like New York city. You want to tear down the old structures to make room for the new structures because maybe the old structures, you don't want old structures in your body. <laughs> you want this stuff to be like pretty tight ship. So, um, we wouldn't want to eliminate it entirely, but if we could dampen it or, you know, utilize some, I don't know, some nutritional timing strategies, like that's why I'm a, not a huge fan of intermittent fasting, especially mm -hmm. for, especially for women who are going to face higher rates of osteoporosis. And then especially in elderly people, and I'm not saying elderly, I'm so sorry that I said elderly because I want to walk that statement back because I don't want somebody who's 60 years old thinking that I'm calling them elderly. Mm. I'm not, but I would say if you're 50, 60 years old, and especially if you're a woman, you should be trying to get some kind of protein bolus. Did you like that word? I did. Thank you. Actually protein feeding, I guess. I don't know. Protein bolus is a pretty natural word for me, but I, I understand that that's not a, I would not say that's a natural it's word. It's not a natural word for like <laughs> most people, but it's like, because I read so many yeah, articles. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard that word. <laughs> it's like a, like a bolus is like a, like a serving or like a feeding or like a, I don't know. It's a bolus. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I'm going to start like using that. that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I made you a bolus, bolus of bacon. <laughs> yeah. Here's your bacon bolus. <laughs> B-O-L-U-S. All right. Anyway, I think it's a really, really smart nutritional strategy to have some kind of protein early in the morning, even at, I'm only 29, but I'm, I'm still doing that. As soon as I wake up, I have like some kind of protein. I mm -hmm. very rarely, even if it's just like a fair life protein shake. So yeah. Um, yeah, fun little tidbit there for you. Do we have anything else that we want to talk about on nutritional strategies on this, on this section? Let's see. I feel like I just, think we covered it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think up so. your fruits and veggies. I mean, that's a big one on vacation and we're going to get into that on the section five or segment five, but that's a big part is just don't completely write off fruits and veggies. If you have a hotel breakfast, dude, get the pancakes, you know, douse it in syrup, do your thing, grab some bacon, grab some sausage, enjoy yourself, but maybe just grab like First off, you could pump the protein of that because the protein's not going to be super high because mm -hmm. even though they grab bacon and sausage, I think people don't understand, like, I don't want to like degrade people's downplay people's knowledge, mm -hmm. but I do think that it is, you see meat and you think that is a source of protein and it yes. is, there is yes. a lot of protein in there, but like, let's say somebody eats, you know, two things of bacon, two things of sausage, they might think like, okay, protein needs are, are good, but if we wanted to get like let's say we wanted to have a higher protein breakfast, maybe 40, maybe 50 grams, mm -hmm. something like that. That'd be a very filling breakfast. You'd be pretty satiated right. for the rest of the day. You wouldn't need to, you definitely would not need to eat as much. Man, I have another tangent I'm about to go on after this, <laughs> but throw in some Greek yogurt. You know, a lot of them have yeah. those uh, Chobani, like small things of Greek yogurt. Um, that would be a very easy way. Maybe like a hard boiled egg. It's not the yeah. leanest option ever, but you know, six grams per hard boiled egg. They usually mm -hmm. have those in fridges. Um, maybe some milk, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of clarifying Just, a lot of breakfast meats, especially are not high in protein. Yeah. A lot of them tend to be pretty high in fat, which yes. is totally fine. Totally like fine. we eat bacon fairly often sausage too, yeah. but I think that is something to kind of be aware of. Like when it comes to breakfast, sometimes hitting that protein target can be a little bit harder. Eggs are a great way to kind of compensate for that. Mm -hmm. Fair life, 
milk or protein shakes. Those can be a great way. Yeah. Greek yogurt, like you said. Some people, I've had clients who bring their protein powder in like baggies yeah. with them on vacation. I think that's a, I think that could be a really good idea and just yeah. like throw it in with a, you know, throw a baggie or a couple baggies in a protein shaker. Mm -hmm. And now it's, you know, if it spills, Right. Not the end of the world. Right. That is smart. I've yeah. never really considered it. Yeah, just throw it inside of a protein shaker and then and it's like a water bottle. I mean, <laughs> you could even use it like once you get through security at the airport, you can now fill up a refillable water bottle. So that could be a good thing to do. Bring a water bottle on vacation. Yeah. We actually did that. And that was the first time I've ever brought a water bottle on vacation. Such a weird really? thing. Yeah, such a weird thing. But I definitely was way more hydrated. Yes. That was nice. Yeah. So the other tangent that I was about to go on is I was kind of thinking, going down the thought process of, okay, you might be more satiated. And so maybe you won't eat as much at following meals. People have a sunk cost fallacy every time they order, especially when they're eating out. If I paid, if you paid listener $20 for a steak or a pizza or whatever it is, don't feel like you need to finish it. You yeah. paid for that food regardless of it is if it is finished or not you can always take leftovers and mm -hmm. if you can't take leftovers let's say somebody's live, you know somewhere where they don't have a, a fridge or something like mm -hmm. that or it's just not leftover friendly or something like nachos Ugh. yeah leftover nachos terrible it's not a it's not a good play you could throw them in an air fryer is that where well, that works better yeah that seems like that would work better, yeah actually. same with fries chips wouldn't get so soggy huh? yeah if you yeah. take fries home from a restaurant throw them in the air fryer what temperature do you know i don't know no like 350 i I make it up. <laughs> you just make it up. I do. I'm not that. I'm yeah. not that. Like skilled. I'll just check in on it. I'm not that skilled. Yeah, I'd, I'd be like googling minutes. it. I'd be like <laughs> double. Oh man, it'd be, it'd be an ordeal for me to just like whip something up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not inept. Like, no, I'm not you're incapable. capable. Yes, yeah, you're yes. very capable. Yeah, I just it feels like you have a, a gift for cooking. That's very sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna plug the at meals with Maddie. <laughs> 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 yeah, at meals with Maddie on Instagram and TikTok. Er... Just Instagram. Yeah. TikTok is just my. It's like your name. random amalgamation of. It's like clothing stuff sometimes. It's yeah. Y you have more random stuff on TikTok. Yeah. The meals with Maddie's just nutrition stuff. Just nutrition, just food. Just food stuff. I shouldn't say nutrition necessarily. Yeah, it it's strictly. It's like I guess education. I should clarify that. It's really it's food content. Food Recipes. content. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe some grocery hauls. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet, but soon. So yeah, you know, if you pay for the food, you've paid for it. Don't eat until you have a stomach ache. Because yes. then because then it isn't a net positive for you anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. Sunk cost fallacy. Don't fall for it. If you get, <laughs> you know, if you, sometimes I used to fall for it. You know what I, when I started calling myself out on this was video games. Mm. And I think a lot of people do it with like books or TV shows or movies yes. and I won't fall for it. I'm actually, I'm, here's another word for you. I'm stalwart. <laughs> <laughs> books is a big one yeah yeah and like you buy something you buy a, a a media you know like a book or a tv show or a movie and you get through it and it's like oh i have to finish this even if i don't like it and it's like no if you don't like it you can just stop if you don't like a chapter that's one thing for sure if, yeah but if if it's you don't like the vibe of this book at all just don't read it i know so many people who will not it's like called dnf do not finish or did yeah. not finish yeah. they will not dnf a book mm. If I get 30 pages into something and I'm yeah. not into it, all right. Money's gone anyway. Yeah. The money has already gone. Yeah. So don't make yourself, don't endure something right. just for the sake of it. Like you can DNF your pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do we, do we, do you feel like we need to talk anything on segment four? No, but for listeners, just so you know, segment four is balancing enjoyment and goals. And I feel yeah. like that's kind of I feel what like we've talked about this whole time. We've been talking about there's a that. There's a balance between like enjoying your vacation, taking off the reins, but still being kind of mindful of what your goals are outside of it. And you get to decide. Yeah. You 100% get to decide if you're going to use vacation to be calorie tracking and meal planning and hitting – X number of workouts and X number of steps. Or if you want to just say like, I'm just going to relax. And yeah. if I hit those things during my day, great. And if not, oh, well. Yeah. Maybe, you know, I think it's people might be listening to this podcast and being like, well, they haven't really given us any like actionable tips in terms of we've been consistently saying you have to do what you want to do. But the most important like follow-up to that that I think that we have been reinforcing and I'm going to reinforce again is 
you need to be okay with the decisions that you make. Yes. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot say, oh, I'm going to do whatever. I want a vacation and then be frustrated when the scale, like I get, mm -hmm. you can be, it's just. It's not going to be productive. No, it's not productive at mm -hmm. all. So you just need to own up to the decisions that you're making. If you want to make smarter decisions, okay, yeah, pre-plan with the tips that we talked about earlier in the episode, but right. don't, don't beat yourself up. The time has passed. The calories have been eaten. The workouts were, I'm not going to say missed because, right. but the workouts weren't done. And if that was you on the other end of it, don't spend even a minute beating yourself up right. because that shit already happened. It's already in the past. So just move on and get back into the routine. And on the other side of things, like if you really are looking for tips on how to manage, you know, hitting X, Y, and Z goals and like tasks during vacation, honestly, nothing changes from vacation to at home. Nope. Like, like your calorie targets the same. The only difference is you're in a different environment, which is why we're calorie saying, targets you know, could change a little, but like for sure. the most part, like, yeah, if you're moving if more, you're, moving less, like, yes, yes exactly. for sure. If you're just a slug on the beach <laughs> or if you are waking up and walking through the corridors <laughs> of Italy, you right. know, like that is going, or if you're hiking, <laughs> <laughs> but if you're, you know, if things are relatively the same, if you go out to eat at home, that is the exact same of prepping to go out to eat on vacation. Yep. Alcohol might be a little bit more prevalent. Going out to eat might be a little bit more prevalent, but the strategies are the exact same when you're on vacation versus when you're at home. Yeah. So that's kind of why a lot of this is like, you just have to decide if you want to be really strict on vacation or if you are going to use this time to take a maintenance break, relax, however you want to put it. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I do say this, I just said this, but don't beat yourself up because mm -hmm. if you're like, Oh, I didn't track on, then treat it as a, treat it as rest. Yeah. Oh, I didn't work out. No. Reframe it in your brain, change your mindset and say, I was able to recover for an entire week. I was able to rest for an entire week. Mm -hmm. And if you come back in this really negative state, like, Oh, now I'm off the rails and now everything's ruined. And now it's all I'm, I'm, I had a client who said, and no disrespect to this client, but she would get back from vacation and she would say, I'm starting over. And it's mm -hmm. like, you aren't, you're not starting over. And here's why you've been lifting for the last six weeks, eight <laughs> weeks, 10, 12 weeks. You've gained so much muscle. You've learned how to track. You've right. learned what you need to track. You've learned how much to track. You have your calorie targets, your protein targets. You know how to, you're incorporating more fiber into your diet because you are bringing fruit into your house. You're prepping it, you're washing it, you're cutting it, you're putting it at eye level in a glass container in your fridge. You're doing all these habits. You have an exercise routine. You have a walking pad now and you're getting these steps in. So you're not resetting, you're not restarting, but it was, it was one of those times. And that's why I'm so firm on the, you need to change your mental. You need to change your mindset because if you just came back and you know, there's two people, twins, one person is like same person, I guess, different dimensions. That's an easier way to <laughs> compare this. You know, one person's like, Oh, I'm, I failed. I give up. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm restarting. And it's like, wow, what a negative mindset to come back for, versus, wow, I had a very restful week. Yes, it's going maybe take some time to get back into the routine. I do have to go grocery shopping, but just like, bam, hit the ground running, start yourself, you set yourself up. But that starts in the brain mm -hmm. every day. I know everybody has different things going on in their life, different stressors, but every day you do get the choice of how you react to every single thing that happens to you. And you can come at it from a very negative perspective or a positive perspective. I just think mindset. Mm -hmm. is really everything. Also, just don't let like that sort of mentality ruin like the memories you had on vacation. Yes. You know, you do yes. not want to be looking back on vacation and think, oh, uh, but the pounds. scale was up yeah. when I got back. It's like, think about the stingrays, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get I get it, though. You know, like, I'm trying to be as empathetic as possible and compassionate. And, mm -hmm. and you know, for somebody who has struggled with their weight for so long, maybe they did start to see progress. Maybe they were <laughs> like, you know, three pounds down, then they go on vacation and they're three pounds up. And for that person, one, re-emphasize in your own brain that this is a scale fluctuation. Mm -hmm. Let me get the next seven days of weight data and then I can be pissed or not pissed about it. But right. I guarantee if you get seven days of weight data, you won't be up that same amount of weight mm -hmm. that you were day one you came back. But, you know, I do get it. Like, just know that 
for the person that has struggled with their weight and feels like they just keep like rebounding after every vacation, you're going to have to change some shit. That's <laughs> the reality. Like if, if that's the, if that's the hamster wheel that you've been running in your entire life, it's time to wake up dog. You got to change some shit. All right. Here are, um, some additional tips and these are primarily for people who can't use the bathroom number <laughs> two on vacation. You know what my primary tip is? What? Get a travel bidet. Yeah. And if you don't have a home bidet, let me write this one out for you. Imagine, imagine you just got shit on your arm. <laughs> imagine your arm was bare and you just got shit on your arm. How would you, how would you, how would you clean off? And if anybody said they would grab a square of paper towel and just wipe it off and move on with their day, they might have kids. <laughs> Cause I, yeah. I, think, I think the tolerance for that goes up when you yeah. have kids. No, you would be at the very least, you'd be at the sink scrubbing your arm at least some water on it so why do we treat the skin between our butt cheeks any different <laughs> i'm just asking i've heard this so many times <laughs> yes and how many times have i convinced a friend to get a bidet with that argument yeah bidet sales are up thanks to you i should get a promo code <laughs> hey if you if you bought a bidet after listening to this and you set it up at home DM me. <laughs> I would love to get the DM. Like you made a really good point. I bought a bidet. I'm I'm not kidding. That might make my day more than like, hey, great fitness tip, great nutrition <laughs> tip. Like you changed my potentially the direction. I changed the direction of so many people's anal health. Okay. That is huge to me. Their their yeah. colorectal career career their colorectal career has taken a new direction and i'm very happy to uh provide that for you okay so in addition to a travel bidet just you know it's nice <laughs> if you want to stay regular in the bathroom if you're somebody who does get constipated quite easily on vacation and this is mm -hmm. a very common thing very yeah. very common thing yeah bloating constipation mm -hmm. on vacation especially the first day like the yeah. day you are traveling and when you think about it like if I'm in the airport or I'm on a plane, I'm not drinking water because yep. I don't want to have to use the airplane bathroom. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's big a big one. one. That's a big one. And if I'm flying in the morning, I might not have as much coffee as I normally do right. or my meals are all messed up. So yeah. fiber is probably yes. down the drain because it's more like of the quick meals rather than yeah. the fruits and the veggies and, and, and the whole grains and all those things that you're going to get, you know, fi oats, you know, things like that. that you are going to get the fiber from, you just might not be getting it so much. Mm -hmm. So here are our recommendations. First, plenty of water. I'm glad mm -hmm. you touched on that right away. You do want to be drinking water. That just basically lubricates your system. So very, very important. The other thing that lubricates your system is fiber, specifically insoluble fiber. It acts as a, like, well, it's a fibrous material and insoluble fiber is not digested by our body. And so it scratches the lining of the inside of our intestines, releasing this kind of mucusy substance. And that, as you can imagine, it's great for lubrication, you know? I mean, it's, I know how gross it is, but mm -hmm. that's just the reality. So grabbing some fruits, veggies for fiber, oats, you know, whole grains, things that you do for fiber at home, do them on vacation. Mm -hmm. If you're really struggling, prunes are a nat natural laxative. Coffee is a very good idea. I know yeah. for a lot of people, it's like the smell of coffee or the morning coffee that really helps them stay regular. So that might be a good idea. Most mm -hmm. places, most hotels, I feel like every place has a coffee machine, either a Keurig or like a yeah, like a standard, I mean, whatever they're called, like a, yeah. like a pot of coffee. I don't know. It feels pretty standard nowadays. Yeah. Plenty of water, like I said. And then if you are really struggling, here's a fun one. In 1985, going back here, going back yeah. quite a bit here. In 1985, a Japanese woman named Mariko Aoki wrote into a magazine called Han no Zashi. And this, I think this means magazine of book or book of magazine, magazine book. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, and that's, that's Japanese. Not that I know how to speak Japanese. I'm just pulling this from an article I was reading. It's not like I'm translating that live. 
<laughs> I don't think any, really I, don't, I don't think anybody thought that, you know. <laughs> but anyways, so she wrote a letter into a magazine, and in her letter, she mentioned that going into a bookstore always triggered her to take shit, basically. <laughs> and <laughs> the magazine published this in their February issue because I don't know. I guess that would be pretty intriguing to me if I got fan <laughs> mail that was like so out of the blue. Yeah. And it actually got several responses from people saying that they experienced the same thing. So the magazine's next issue had a 14 page feature article on this mystery and the Mariko Aoki phenomenon was born and it's yeah. actually called the Mariko Aoki phenomenon. Like that's the, that's the name. Mm -hmm. Science hasn't created a new name <laughs> and this is this isn't like, oh, she was some like illustrious writer from Japan. She was just a random woman in 1985 who wrote this into a random Japanese. And now people around the world know this phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine writing in like you're so bewildered by this your thing? That's, that's your that's, dynasty. Yeah, that's, that's happening your, yeah. to you when you go to the bookstore. You just want to peruse some books. Yeah. <laughs> and then you write into the magazine and they publish it. And now it's worldwide information. Yeah. I, just imagine like being a friend of that family or something, or you know what I mean? Like you're, you're going to school with Mariko's like kid or something mm -hmm. like that or grandkid even. And you're like, you know, two truths and a lie. My grandma created the murder, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that's a great one. Just like the family lore. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. I'm so jealous of that family. Yeah. I'm happy for them. I hope they treat it with respect. Yeah. You know? Really common in bookstores. Where are there? There's uh, like department stores is a big one. Yeah, yeah. I specifically hear about Marshall's TJ Maxx. I don't know why, but like those stories in particular yeah. come up a lot. I saw they had mentioned and I mean, it was from 2014, but they had mentioned that as of 2014, yeah. there has not been any research that has and they, they have tried. They, there were some there were some trials that, especially in Japan, that were trying to figure out like why this was going on, yeah. and they couldn't pinpoint it. They had a few ideas. One of them was just like a standard Pavlov. They thought, okay, well, people maybe are often reading while <laughs> they are going number two. And so going into a Barnes and Noble or some kind of mm. bookstore, you smell the paper. And so there's some kind of relationship there that was disproven. Actually, oh. I forgot how they tested for it. I didn't really dig into this because I just thought it was so funny. Just a small addition. You know, right. um, I wonder if we should ever do an episode on like legit diving into one thing like that, <laughs> like that, that for like an hour. Yeah. I do think this is such an interesting I think one. This is so interesting. Yeah. yeah. So Anyway, if you're really struggling to use the bathroom, just find a bookstore, find a bookstore, find a, a Marshall's. Marshall's or a TJ Maxx or, you know, and just, just walk in, maybe walk around the aisles and just kind of see how you're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Give it a whirl. Yeah. All right. Segment six is going to be a quick wrap up. How to get back into your routine. It's, it's tough actually. Yeah, I think travel really takes it out of you yeah. the following day. And I think a day or two. Yeah. Sometimes I think because you got laundry to do. Yeah. Just, you got to just, just like kind clean of up giving yourself some grace when it comes to getting back Actually, into your routine. One thing that we did is now your mom stayed here. So, mm -hmm. it, I mean, she's phenomenal and she like cleans our whole house for her, for us, which is it's so, so sweet. sweet. But we cleaned up before quite a bit. Like I was taking yeah. those boxes that we had in there from the eight sleep. Review is coming soon, by the way, on the eight sleep. But early, early impression, we absolutely love it. I yeah. may have men mentioned that on the last one, but absolutely love it. Anyway, early readings are positive. Early ratings are very positive. Yeah. Feelings are good. So, you know, one, one thing I would encourage you to do to get back onto your routine is, and I say this very often, but shoot for your minimum. Yes. Write down a checklist, write down like goals for the week, track one meal, make two homemade meals, make meal prep, mm -hmm. go on, go, go grab groceries. That should be. You should be doing that the day or the day after you get home is restocking every like your groceries. So you have yeah. meals at home. Don't fall into this like pattern of like, oh, don't have anything. Guess we got to eat at like you can do that for sure. Yeah. But just try to get back to it as soon as you can get back into that routine that you set. Because the longer that you delay that, the longer you could be either heading in the wrong direction mm -hmm. or just not the direction that you want to. Right. You know, you're stagnant. And post vacation is a great time to kind of take advantage of those like grocery pickup services. Yeah, you know, definitely. like 
you don't have to spend time in the in advance, right? You, you know? don't have to spend time in the grocery yes. grocery store, but you can restock your house. Love that. I love the post vacation grocery trip, but I love grocery shopping. Yeah, you do. I love it. You should make some grocery shopping content. Yeah. Well, our group. Yeah. What I was gonna say, our grocery trips are so expensive. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, I don't think that's like. I think that's just the norm. For this us, day and age. <laughs> this day and age, but also for us, because yeah. I have food allergies. So we like, eat everything in the house. Well, and I can't have chicken. That's true. Chicken, our, that, our protein bill is high because yeah. I can't eat chicken. And we so eat a lot like, of red meat. And well, and salmon, mm -hmm. and which is a little bit pricier than chicken. Absolutely. Shrimp, for sure, is very pricey. <laughs> yeah. So it's like our proteins are always just... You know, that, yeah. that does get expensive. But so sometimes it feels a little like unrelatable, but that yeah, doesn't really matter. I get that. But people will pick and choose, you know, what for parts sure. are, you know, are helpful for them. And you make, you, you sometimes make chicken content anyways. Yeah. Chicken content. <laughs> <laughs> I love chicken content. Chicken content. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And is there anything else you want to add to like getting back into your routine? You know, do, commit to one workout. Yeah. You know, do your grocery trip as fast as possible. Go back on your daily walk. You, you cannot as a, that was a slip. <laughs> you said it a couple of times. Have I? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The reason that was a slip is because Leo is in, we're just like in our living room, basically right. dining portion of the living room. Yeah. We have like one room. We have one room basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when you say W-A-L-K, he always perks up and kind of expects you to take him. So I'm sorry to him for not catching that earlier. I let it slip. Sorry, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to get into on how to get back to your routine? I think that really I, I think sums that it up. up. I think a oh, big one is sleep. Sleep. I was just about, <laughs> yes, getting yeah. back into your sleep routine. I know. I always sleep a lot better the first night when you get back because yeah. you're in your own bed. Yep. Your, your sleep hygiene is a little bit better. Yep. Just you're in your own space. Yep. So I think that's a really big one is, you know, like we've touched on, consider your minimum of, you know, what you can kind of manage those first couple days back. But sleep is a really good one. Um, just allowing yourself ample time to yeah. rest. Maybe this isn't advice, but ask your doctor before ever adding, adding a supplement. But if you were staying up later on vacation, which isn't mm -hmm. the case for us usually, cause we're just so, we're so tired from moving around and like being yeah. in the sun really takes it out of you. But if you're somebody who stays up later on vacation and you want to kind of get back to the normal bedtime, again, not advice, talk to your doctor before adding anything, but melatonin could be a really good mm -hmm. idea to help you kind of like readjust that sleep cycle if you're struggling yeah. to fall asleep on your own. Mm -hmm. Okay. That concludes it. Yeah. I think so. I think so too. So yeah, we're going to go pick up some pizza now. And we watch got, the Lions yeah, win. Got, yes, watch the Lions win. Just a quick edit. The Lions did not win. I'm recording this the day after, so... Yeah. 49ers fans, enjoy that one. We got some Little Caesars. I'm convinced. No one can convince me otherwise. I can assure you she is convinced otherwise now. But the Lions are going to go to the Super the Bowl. The Lions are going to the Super Bowl. The Lions, in fact, are not going to the Super Bowl. This is the year. And if not, I'll cry on the next episode. <laughs> on the next... Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. When you said next episode, I thought you meant next episode of NFL. <laughs> call it episodes they should yeah yeah they already call it seasons yeah so like very on yeah on theme yeah this sunday's episode okay if you speaking of episodes if you enjoyed this episode please give us a five-star review a thumbs up a like a share whatever it is on the platform you're listening to if you want to support maddie and i without spending a single dollar follow us on instagram or tiktok at alex timmy fitness for me that's a-l-e-x-t-h-i-e-m-e -E fitness you can follow me on YouTube as well, just Alex Teamy. And then Maddie, do you want to shout out yours? Yeah, on Instagram. My handle is at Meals with Maddie, and Maddie is spelled M A T T I. Yeah. And if you enjoyed this episode, we would love, in addition to your five star review, if you would screenshot this and share it on your Instagram story and tag us at Alex mm -hmm. Teamy Fitness mm -hmm. and at Meals with Maddie, we would be so grateful. It really helps us grow the podcast. When you give it your, your, you know, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a glowing review. You could just say, solid episode. Yeah. Good tips. Yeah. Something. Currently listening. Currently you don't even listening. have to have an opinion yet. <laughs> no, don't even form an opinion yet. That's great advice. Just say, 
currently listening. Yeah. Yeah. And then tag us and we would share that. It just, it adds so much credibility, you know, Uh because other people, we can show off other people are listening. So anyway, won't really parrot you for for that, but we really would appreciate it. And then if you want to support us monetarily, Maddie currently does not have any paid products, but I do. I have the A-Team, which is my group training program, four days per week six week training cycles. It is $27 a month. So less than a dollar a day. And it comes with a seven day free trial. So you can just try it out. And if you don't like it, dude, just screenshot all the workouts and cancel before you get charged. And if you, if if you don't have the money for it, I've mentioned this before, and this is an open offer, please just open up the trial, screenshot each workout, cancel it. Don't get charged. Make a new, I don't know if I can legally say make a new email to do that. So I'm not (laughs) recommending that. I am not recommending that. I don't know if, you know, the platform owners would yeah. like be not happy with that. Not that they know me or I know them personally, but quite the outro at this point. <laughs> people people heard that we're going to wrap it up and it's like seven minutes later. They're like, how long is this going for? <laughs> <laughs> and the other paid for service that I have is Forward Forever, which is my group training, nutrition and education program with Danielle, the dietitian, where we pretty much handle everything for you. It's, uh, it's a pretty pretty well-baked program. So anyway, we are going to actually wrap it up here. Thank you so much for listening. We had a great time with this and I hope you learned a lot. And we'll see you next week. Take care guys.